Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we are checking out one system from the user uh, Pacifican Mapping um, on Discord. So a massive thank you to them for sending in their simulation. Obviously guys, if you'd like to send in your own simulations for this series as well, make sure to join my Discord server, link in the description where you can upload your systems there in our dedicated simulation submission chat. So yeah, please keep that in mind when uploading, it can take me a while to get to your system after you upload it because there is a big queue of people who are already waiting so yeah please keep that in mind but without further ado let's get into this so their system is called the Sarlala I probably completely butchered that but here it is so the Sarola system I hope I'm saying that right so let's see what they're prepared for us today so come on game what have we got oh taking its time loading it must be something really big come on game what have we got Oh, it's really taking its time. Wow, we is it gonna load? Come on, there you go. Oh god, okay, this is big. Oh, okay. That is huge. I may have to delete the asteroid box because that is very, very laggy. Oh my god, okay. Uh there is an asteroid, but yeah, there's an asteroid. It can't just be an asteroid belt. There's gotta be rings in here. There's two asteroid belts. Oh, this PC doesn't like this. It's really insane. Oh my god. You can see the lag. Look at the lag. I mean, I'm just watching on the recording system. That's not the recording system lagging. The, g the game is generally that laggy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So, a system somewhat like our own. Ten planets, six dwarf planets, and around six candidates and four comets. The system is full of exploration. Still in development. January update. Change name of ruse. Okay. Right. So, first planet here. It's got Neph. Uh, it's the smallest planet and the closest is Zara. It has no moons and no form moisture on its surface this was the last planet to be discovered due to its small size so we'll just open it up here oh it looks really battered as well look at that oh my god cool that does look pretty cool uh unfortunately i'm gonna delete the rings because it's just yeah that's so much better there we go i'm gonna just turn my graphics up as well because they are a little low at this point that's good i think it's render isn't it yeah that's better uh 90 i mean normally i could just have it on 100 can't i but i'll just just so the simulation runs smoothly i'll go on 75 so there it is Okay, so now we can actually look at the planets properly. Because, yeah, those rings are too laggy. Remember, if you upload systems, I may have to delete the rings if there's too many. Because, yeah, they do really lag the PC down. Uh, next up, we got uh, Rulix over here. So this is the second smallest planet. Uh, it has no moons and no moisture on its surface. Rulix orbits clockwise, even though many scientists don't have a clue. It may have been hit by a large object. It is the most geologically active planet. Its tectonic plates move by one kilometre every month. That is insane. Which is why it has very high mountains, grand canyons, but little volcanoes. Nice. It says Rulix. Okay, next up we have got Foral. So that's over here. It's the second largest terrestrial and the third away from Zoro. It has one moon and has oceans of liquid called Fora... Foraline? Um, that is far from similar to water. Uh, water. Fora has been given the nickname Fake Life because it looks so habitable while it isn't. It is 75 percent denser than water that liquid okay and is said to be carbonated the freezing point is around zero degrees and evaporates at 135 degrees it releases co2 into the atmosphere and rains down as dry ice its moon flint has lots of uh flint in its composition okay so a planet that looks earth-like but isn't earth-like whatsoever with that blue liquid so there's the one of the moons okay and there's flint over there nice so there it is oh right Okay. Cool. Uh, what we got next? Okay, so we've got Rusa over here. So this is the fourth planet and the fourth smallest planet. It is the most hospitable with its large oceans of water and organic surface. It has an atmosphere of nitrogen, oxygen, H2O, and CO2. Rusa has life that has evolved to create technology and even more. Sadly, due to no vegetation, he can't add the life. Ah, that's annoying. Oh, well. Um, so there it is. Looking good. So a nice reddish looking world. Let's have a little look underneath. Uh, it's under there. There it is. Okay. Yeah, nice. Cool. So, cool. There it is. It also has some moons as well. Have a quick peek at those guys as well. Looking good. Nice. Cool, cool. Alright, next up, we are heading to uh, Kepio. I think that's the way name of that one. Where, where is that? So we're taking a bit of a jump. So this is a gas giant. Okay, so it's the sixth planet and the largest planet. It has many storms and many moons. One year on Kefio is about 13 Earth years. Okay. About 13 Earth years. 
interesting stuff indeed. Okay. Uh, it has it has the second and third largest moon in the system. It keeps the asteroid belt in check. Okay, so yeah, this is where the asteroid belt was sitting. So, pretty cool. And there it is. So it also has a lot of moons. I mean, we'll have a quick peek at them, but they look pretty uh, generic looking. So, there they all are there. So this is the dominant gas giant of the system, as we can see. Its moons have been bashed to shreds. You can see all the craters on them. That's pretty cool. There you are. Nice. Okay, so next up we're heading to Palin, the seventh planet, and the second largest. It has beautiful rings of ice and dust. Yeah, this is... We'll have to come back later and just check the rings at the end of the episode. Um, actually, no, we can do that now, actually. Let's just, let's just see what this actually did look like with its... Um, with its rings, because obviously I had to remove them all just due to simulation purposes. As you can see, it takes eight. Look how long it takes to open this one. Like, oh my god. <laughs> it doesn't normally take this long to open a simulation. You can see there's a lot of ring particles in here. So that's why it was um, very, very slow. So, come on, game. It really does take its time, doesn't it? Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, we'll just do this once. But yeah, there you are. All right, so let's just try and find it now. Oh my god, it's so slow. So it was this yellow one, wasn't it? Yeah, Palin. Let's just see what it looked like with its rings. Oh, come on! It's freezing! Don't freeze! Go! There you go. Oh my god, that's so slow. Oh, it's so laggy. Okay. But there it is. That's what it looks like with its rings. So, get a brief look at it before I delete them. But there you go. So, that is definitely the Saturn equivalent here. It's Control D. Get rid of all that. There you go. So, you did see the rings. So, yeah, I'm not, not trying to get rid of them. Right. Um, so, onto the moons. Have a quick brief look at those guys as well. They all look pretty generic. Definitely reminds me of Saturn's system with the way the, the moons are organised, but there it is. That's definitely a Titan-like object. That is, yeah, it's definitely based off Titan, that one. It's got to be, and yeah, but there you go. Nice, I like it. So you've definitely got some similarities with the solar system. He said it was based off our system, didn't he? Um, I like it. Yeah, somewhat like our own. Yeah, I like that. Uh, next up, we got this one. So, Ven... Uh, what's that? Venio is the eighth planet and the fourth largest. So this would be a Uranus-like object tilted on its side as well. Obviously got a bunch of moons. Um, it has some of the smallest moons and has a very inclined axis tilt. Definitely similar to Uranus. It has the third most visible rings. Ah, this one had rings as well. Damn. I'm not going to open the simulation again, unfortunately, because it's just so slow. Um, it's considered an ice giant due to water and methane on it. I mean, what we can do, just to give it actually a, just a shirt and appearance, we'll just add the rings ourselves. So we'll just go two to four radar, just something simple. There you go. So that's roughly what it would have looked like. So there you are. Cool. All right. Next up, we are heading to Delas. Delas uh, orbits. Where are we heading next? There it is. This is probably the Neptune equivalent. Is the ninth planet and the darkest one. There you go. Okay. Uh, it has a deep blue colour and has a few main moons. It has giant storms and rains crystals that can grow to be the size of a truck. Wind speeds here have been second, raging around 250 miles an hour. The largest moon, Juvie, has a red thick atmosphere. Its ring system is the second most visible, even if the outer ring is most visible. So yeah, this would have had a, a Uranus sort of ring system around it. Uh, let's check that red moon out. Okay, there. Is that it there? Uh, what was the moon called? Uh, Juvie. So that's it there, okay. A thick red atmosphere. I've not seen a thick red atmosphere. Is it hidden? Uh, let's have a look. Oh, it was switched off. There you go. That's what it looked like. Nice. Cool. Okay, next out, we are heading to Far Off. It's got a lot of reading this one. Where, where is Far Off? Uh, labels? Far Off? Wait, where is it? I can't find it. Uh, da -da -da. So we're, we're at Juvie's Far Off. Where is it? I can't. Oh, there it is. There you go. Right. So it's the tenth planet and the coldest one of all. It has oceans of liquid ethane on its surface and has one large moon named Capho, which has very thick atmosphere. In strong telescopes with the Celestial 10 mission, it has been discovered that Faro has a golden atmosphere due to the abundant amount of gold on its surface. There is even gold storms where wind picks up lots of gold nuggets and gold dust and other things and rages across the surface. Wowee. It is also the sister planet to Ruts being almost identical in size. Along with the dwarf planets and dwarf planet canets, this makes up one mighty system with lots of exploration. Make sure to explore. All right, nice, because there was a lot we missed. So let's just go back through them all. Uh, we also had a cafe over here as well, says so it's thick atmosphered moon. All right, so just having a brief look back, there was a lot of objects we skipped, like all these inclined, like what is all this about? Is this all like, so we didn't see all of these. So we'll have a quick brief look at them all. And I'll just try and select them all, just because I'm not going to visit them all, because that'll take us ages. So, 
there's just a brief look of all. So there's a lot of asteroid objects in here. Okay, I see. Uh, so there's that. I also had the Zip planet here. Plus that's a comet as well. But yeah, all these ones that didn't have coloured trails. These def these were ones we missed. So you see that most of them are asteroids, but there was a few planets in there as well. Try and select them all. So there you are. Looking good. Nice. So taking a jump out. So got all of these guys. So they're all, they're all minor objects, as we can see. So there they are there. Looking good. Kind of want to play the simulation, see what it can do. Uh, but there you are. Yeah. Nice. Now, I did spot some stars in the distance as well. So we're going to check those guys out as well. And see what is going on out there. So, there it is. Okay. So, what is this all about? What is going on over here? So, we've got a binary star system in the distance. By the looks of it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So, there's two. There's a binary there. And is this another binary? Ah, oh, hidden planet, hidden planet, hey, hey, nice, so it's a tidy locked world by the looks of it, I mean it's a nice hot Neptune, and then it's also got a, oh, another planet, so it's actually a trinary star system, so you've got the one star there, you've got the binary here, so it's trinary, and then you've got the, oh, oh, oh I didn't see all those, where'd they come from, <laughs> they weren't there earlier, were they, where'd they come from, oh my god, Wait, this wasn't where we were earlier. Where did we come from? There's hidden systems in here. I didn't... <laughs> oh my god. How many is that? Oh. So we came from this system here. This is where we came from. So... I said the... Oh, yeah, look at all the stars. There's loads of them. Okay, so... Oh my god. Oh my... So they all have their own little... Oh, there's so many in here. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at all this. So they got, they're all stars orbiting stars for the most part, as you can see. So we won't really travel too much to all of them, but yeah. So there's loads of star systems in here. So it's like a mini mini cluster. This is like a cluster simulation. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'd argue it's a it's a mini cluster. You can see they're all nicely packed to close together. There. That's pretty cool. I like it. There's obviously the main system in the middle. Yeah. So the, all the some planets around here. Let's have a quick look at them all as well. There's an Earth-like planet there. Nice. Check its stats out. 93 and 81. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so it's like a cluster of planets. Or, or stars, I should say. Each with their own little systems. Yeah, it's nice. No wonder the system was laggy when we started. Because it had all these in it as well. All these other systems. I mean, there's loads of them in here. I mean, I'm not going to check them all out because we will probably be here for a while. But I mean, I'll try and look at some of the notable planets in these systems. So you can see there's a very, very hot one here. I mean, look at that. Oh, Very, very hot indeed. So there's that one. You've also got another glowing hot object there. So there's another glowing hot gas giant. But there's loads of extra planets uh, hidden in here as well. So it's a pretty cool system. I do like it. So we've got another one around Juno here. Another glow. Oh, that one's very gold. Oh. <laughs> I like how the hot side's facing away from the star. What's that? Let's put it play. What's that all about? <laughs> uh, get rid of that. What's happened here? It's the wrong way. <laughs> the temperature's the wrong way around. What if I like manually fix it? Saucy, it's meant to be like that, isn't it? So. Is that better? That's better. I fixed it. <laughs> I think the tidy lock side was like the wrong way around or something. There you go. That's better. Hey, there you go. Still a bit laggy as you can see. I mean, I'm just looking on OBS now at what you guys can see. I mean, yes, the game, that's not OBS being slow. That's generally just the game uh, processing it all at once. Because obviously, it's process the more objects you have orbiting different objects, the more laggy your simulation will be. So there it is. But that's a huge system of stuff. I mean, yeah, I like it. It's a nice, nice little packed uh, system. Or systems, I should say. I mean, let's just see how fast it can go. I mean, I'm not expect. Yeah, it's not going to go very quick with all those stars trying to simulate as well. But yeah, there you go. So, yeah, very, very nice system indeed. I liked it. That was a good system. So, yeah, that was the Zarala system. Zarala system. Hope I'm saying that right. So, yeah, I, I liked it. Very, very nice system indeed. And yeah, that was submitted by the user Pacifican Mapping. So, very, very nice job to them. Really enjoyed that one. Um, so yeah, any feedback, tip and stuff, let them know down below in the comments what you thought of his system. And yeah, if that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.